Welcome to Focus Radio and Television. This is Anthony Rayo, and we're here with Focus Lake County's radio program brought to you by Red Apples Media. You're, of course, hearing us uh, over the air on My790 AM, uh, Station 790 out of Leesburg here. And you can listen to us the first and third Thursday of each month at 1.30 in the afternoon on WLBE. We know our October issue is out on stands at more than 130 locations throughout the Lake County. You can catch that uh, in print and also online at focuslakecounty.com. And then you can watch shows uh, like Focus TV and this Focus radio program on LSTV, which is Comcast channel number 13, Bright House 498, or Florida Cable 4. Or you can catch us at Focus Lake County or lakesumptertv.com. So there's a, a bunch of topics going on in the October issue, but right now we're going to turn our attention to Dr. Ahmed Al-Hazouri with Florida Cancer Specialists. Uh, they have a number of practices throughout Lake County, um, and they're specialists in cancer. They also have a practice right on the grounds on the campus at Florida Hospital Waterman. So thanks for joining us, Dr. Al-Hazouri. Hey, my pleasure. Thank you for having me, and thanks to all your listeners. Yeah, we appreciate you coming on, on the show today. You're a medical oncologist and you work very closely with patients and personalize their care to, to kind of benefit them in that battle for cancer. Absolutely, yeah. Um, you know, my patients are our are, are family, our friends, our neighbors. You know, I see them in the office, I see them in, in Publix, I see them on the street. They wave to me, they make me good cookies. And as you can tell, I am f fed very well by my patients. Yeah, I understand you live within the community, and, and this is kind of, like you said, your family. Absolutely, yeah. Um, when I tell someone about some a, a patient of mine, I say, I have a friend of mine that, that you know has such and such that needs your help. So I consider them my friends and my family, and, and, and I think that's what most oncologists should uh, consider their patients as. Yeah, I would understand that would probably go a long way in the personal care that they're receiving during treatment. Right, right. Uh, God knows they see me more than they see the other parts of their family. And, and God knows I see them more than I see my family, so they might as well be my family. So what is your goal then when you're treating a patient like that, knowing that it's really somebody that becomes its personal relationship with them? You know, it's very important. I'm glad you asked that question because um, as an oncologist, I may know what this person has or may need in the future, but it's very important the first time them and I see each other is to establish some trust. It's like meeting a person you're going to be in communication with, you're going to see a lot of times you know, for the first time. Yeah, it's kind of feeling each other out, making sure that this is a, a person that, that, or make sure I project that I am a person that um, will be there by their side, uh, will take care of their medical needs, in this instance the oncology needs, but also listen to other things. You know, like I said, you know, a good chunk of what we spend in time talking about is, is medicine and, and cancer and, and, and blood disorders and whatnot, but there's a significant portion that we just talk about, you know, family, um, uh, pets, cooking, where you've been, you know, how are you, how is your granddaughter, and, and such and such. So it, it really just is about building trust. Um, you can get medical knowledge off the internet, you can get medical knowledge off of other doctors, but it really takes uh, a really good bond or a strong bond and trust uh, in order to, for someone to accept a life-altering, life, you know, uh, life-changing decision. How does that trust help during the treatment process? You know, medicine is not is not just books, um, and and if it was, then you'd punch in something in the computer until you it'll tell you what to do. So, medicine is an art. Uh, you know, I, I may not be a, a great painter, but I think I'm a, I'm a good doctor. And so what I do to someone or what I recommend to someone will largely depend on that someone, their wishes, knowing more about them and knowing more about their family helps me tailor what they need or what I recommend. And, and if they trust me and if they think that I am uh, their best advocate, then they will take that to heart and be more compliant and therefore have better results hopefully in their medical care. And what are some of those technologies that are now in use that people that you would recommend or that you would sit down and, and find out whether it would work for a certain patient? Oh gosh, technology is hand in hand with medicine. You know, uh, yeah, in, in the in the good old days, and, and I don't know what good old days are, but I use that phrase. Um, th there wasn't as many medicines, um, so technology has helped not just bring new medicines uh, available to folks, 
but technologies in delivery of medicines. You know, there are certain medicines we used to admit people to the hospital to to give. Now we don't. We have we have mobile pumps that are small, very easy to walk around with. There are certain medicines that we couldn't give unless you were admitted to the hospital in the intensive care unit because it would cost so much side effects. Nowadays, certain technologies can deliver uh, life-saving medicines at a push of a button, a, a device you carry on your skin that gives you a, a life-saving medication the day after chemotherapy. You don't even have to come in to, to the clinic to get it. Um, uh, uh, people email me, you know, obviously technology, email communication, text me, they, 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 uh, they use all sorts of different technologies just to make sure that, that they're safe, that they get what they need, and that they recover well. So technology is, is you know, you just come to the office and see how many devices and how many um, tech, you know, software and, and stuff we use just to make sure that what we do is safe and effective. Yeah, and you mentioned that communication is kind Absolutely. of the key yeah. in this in this process. How have you found patients uh, expressing themselves and, and being able to communicate with you? Um, people are different. Uh, you know, some people don't communicate with you directly. Their 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 significant other is the one that tells you what's going on. You ask a question, and you look at the at the person. And usually, these are men, by the way. Uh, we are horrible communicators. Men are. And you look at the, the guy, and and. He says nothing. You look at his wife, and she gives you the, you know, the whole story. And, and there's the person that will write things down for you, and there's the person that will, um, you know, write you a nice typed letter. And there's a person that will send you an email. And there's a person that will, um, you know, send you a text message. So it, it's all different kinds of communication. But communication is key. And and you know, it, it depends on the person. You sit there, and and that's why the first and second um, visit is very important because you sit there and and you can tell what kind of a person this is, and you can tell how much this person wants to involve to get involved in their care. And I encourage everybody, obviously, to to get involved in their care. But you can also tell how much this person does not want to know, or or would rather you know rather know in in different ways. And and these are all things that you really have ample time to figure out and, and you really should focus on. This is not, you know, sit down in a chair, God forbid, you have cancer, this is what we need to do. I mean, once you say that cancer word, it's almost like a blank stare and, and that's rightfully so. That's human. That's that's the correct way of, of dealing with things because you do need time. People do need time. I need time to accept this, to digest this, to get my mind around this and it's always helpful to have obviously family members with you. Yeah. and. We were talking a little bit before the show about the nurse navigator's place now yeah, in your practice. Very important. How does that help, and how does it help you as the actual medical doctor who's overseeing the patient's treatment? Um, let's just define a few things. So a nurse navigator, uh, and the way the way most practices in most places has a nurse navigator. This is a nurse that obviously knows a lot about medicine and knows a lot about cancer. In this case, because she's a cancer nurse navigator. Uh, but also is fine-tuned and, and honed in on making sure that the non-medical needs are met. So we're talking about um, social, um, financial, very important. Um, anything else that's, that's not necessarily something that I can assess. You can imagine how many times a nurse navigator will come and, and tell me, this is before I've even met this person, that such and such has you know, this concern. And so when you focus on that concern the first time you see them, you know, it's just like an open book. It just, you, that person just opens up to you and, and starts telling you the things that, that in my mind are very important, obviously, but after you addressed what they consider more important. And, and that can be a lot of things. Yeah. Now, you also have, besides the nurse navigators, a large network of doctors, almost 200 different doctors, nurses, and specialists that are either on staff with Florida Cancer Specialists and then through partnerships with hospitals like Florida Hospital Waterman. How has been able to consult those kind of specialists and doctors helped in, in the treatment? Uh, they're called my blessing. Uh, my blessing helps me because I don't pretend to know everything. Uh, gosh, I don't even know a lot of things, but um, I do know how to get it. I do know how to know about it and I do know who to ask. And so there are, like I said, there's a lot of things in medicine that's not really clear cut. And what's clear cut for one person is not clear cut for another. And so it's always important, it's always very helpful and reassuring that when you make a decision and, and you and the person are, are sure of it, but would like reassurances that this is what the majority of people would have done, it's very easy to ask 200 oncologists, what do you guys think? 
uh, not necessarily go to see all 200 oncologists, hopefully, but what do you guys think? And, and it's almost like taking a poll, and, and, and usually the majority of people will say the right thing. Um, and, and it's very important, uh, and, and it's very helpful, and such as uh, having a, a clinic right on campus in the hospital. Um, I can walk less than 10 feet, and I am in the radiation oncologist office. And I can say, hey, uh, can I show you something? And, and, and honestly, if I wasn't on the campus, I may not be able to do that, or that person may not be able to get to me right then and there. So it, ease of access is very important. I may walk a hundred feet and I'm in the hospital and, and my patient that needs to see me three times a day because he's an inpatient, you know, admitted to the hospital in need of me three times a day. I can provide three times a day because I don't have to drive half an hour to get to the hospital. Uh, and the radiologist that needs to tell me, hey, what does this guy have? Because I'm seeing something that can be interpreted both ways. He can just walk over or call me and say, you know, tell me more. I, I need to know more information in order better to, to help you. And these are small things, but they make the wheels turn. I mean, this is the grease that makes the wheel turn. And, and without it, they'll turn, but it'd be, it would be awfully painful to do. Yeah, it makes a big difference. It now, does. Who could we call, or do you have a main number or a website that we can go to to get more information if we want to know more about the practice? Absolutely. You know, we, we are a community-based um, oncologist. A lot of folks just walk in. They're not patients. They're concerned about their loved ones. They're concerned about their family, and they want to ask. They want to ask a question, you know, how can we help? Uh, especially if someone is, is driving a long distance or, or, you know, we have a lot of snowbirds that will move down from up north, and, and they want to make sure that, that there's quality care, um, you know, that, that is around here, and they don't have to, you know, be moving or driving very long distances, and, and they can just come up to the office. We're located on the Florida Hospital Waterman Campus. Um, our website is flcancer.com. Um, our phone numbers are available. They can just call the hospital and they will divert us, to, uh, divert them to us. You know, our nurses are trained to answer general questions. Mind you that some details sometimes we can't discuss um, just because a lot, of, a lot of specific questions need a lot of specific details that we'll need. Um, but it's a good introduction. And, and in cancer in general, um, there's the American Cancer Society that, that we work hand in hand with. Uh, the Waterman, um, Florida Hospital Waterman Cancer Center um, main website has a lot of information. And, and I want you to think of all these as portals, as ways to get into what you need. They will never be a substitute of, of you know, one-on-one, -on -one, ask a question and get an answer. Yeah. Now, as a kind of a final question, on a personal note, what is it that motivates you to continue in the battle against cancer? Yeah, you know, it's funny. That's not the first time I've been asked that question. And, and, and the first time I asked, I've, I asked that question or somebody asked that question of me, I kind of took maybe 60 seconds to think. And then, and then you know how like that voice in the back of the head tells you, duh, um, it really is the patients. Um, it's your family. Uh, put yourself in that shoe. If you had someone you loved and cared about going through this kind of journey and ordeal where you just don't know what to expect. Wouldn't you want someone that you think would be your advocate, that would be your brother, you know, um, sister, confidant? And, and, and what makes me get up in the morning and have a big smile on my face, and people will tell you I always smile, is I see, I see my folks, I see my family, my patients, and they, and they are appreciative. They are happy, they are content, and uh, we love them for it. Well, thank you so much for joining us, My Dr. Pleasure, Al Mazzori. Anytime. And we'll be back with Focus Radio with uh, Georgian Bjornsson, the Cancer Care Navigator at Florida Hospital Waterman, after this break. Welcome back to Focus Radio and Television. You are listening to us here on WLBE, My 790 AM, or watching us on Comcast 13, Bright House 498, or Florida Cable 4. Of course, be sure to like Focus Lake County on Facebook and keep in, in tune with us on YouTube and pick up a copy of the October Focus. The uh, cover story is all about the penny sales tax and how uh, the education behind that is going to help you make an informed decision in voting on it November 3rd. Now we're back on the program and we'd like to welcome Georgianne Bjornsson. Uh, she is the Florida 
uh, Hospital Waterman Cancer Care Navigator, one of the two that's there at Florida Hospital Waterman. And you, I understand you just joined the Cancer Institute staff from the radio uh, oncology department. So welcome to the show. And well, thank you. And thank you for uh, coming here to talk a little bit more about the duties that you help patients uh, connect with as far as their cancer treatment. So what exactly is a cancer care navigator? We talked a little bit with the doctor about that, but your job is a little bit more hands-on even. Yes, it is. Uh, the majority of the patients that we see can come to us with initial diagnoses or even pre-diagnosis. And our job is to make sure that we can assess the patient, see where they're at, and find out where do we need to take them on their journey through all of these different entities of treatment that they're going to need. Um, it can be anywhere from helping the patient to obtain an actual diagnosis, referring them to different physicians. It can be uh, resources that we need to hook them up with, whether there be financial issues. And it's also looking at any barriers that could be uh, available, or not available, but be present at the time when we're looking at the patient that may really interfere with treatment or, or may be an extreme obstacle for them. Now, what sort of barriers, maybe from testimonials after talking to one of the, the, the patients, have you seen that the that Navigator service has helped them overcome? Well, when we have a patient, just recently I was talking with one, and his extreme concern was he has a mother at home, he needs to have somebody come in and stay with the mom, but yet he knows that he has to come for his treatment every single day, Monday through Friday. Not only does he need to get there, worry about somebody taking care of his mom, but he has no transportation. So we're looking at a, a couple of things that we need to address here. Uh, we need to be able to find a resource for the patient to be very comfortable in allowing a sitter to come in to stay with mom, setting him up with Lake County transportation so that he has a way to get to our facility every day, which is, which is not gonna impede his radiation treatments. If we can begin to eliminate some of those barriers and, and difficulties and weights that the patients have on their shoulders, it makes them more compliant with treatment. It also uh, alleviates a lot of the stress involved. I would imagine so. What would you like the community to know about the Cancer Navigator program that they could share with family and friends? The Cancer Navigator program is very new um, and it is still evolving. But one of the things that we have really found that we would like the community to know about is that we are there to help you as the patient, caregivers, loved ones, families, to walk through the entity of what this diagnosis is. Many times physicians don't have a, an enormous amount of time to be able to spend with a patient, but we're able to go over what that diagnosis is, whether it's using charts, um, uh, pictures, literature that we can help them with to uh, really get them to understand what's happening with what they have now been told. Also, we are. I want the community to know that we are here at their disposal to help if there are obstacles with scheduling the patient, um, whether it be resources that we need to do, or is it what physician do you need to see? If we can begin to develop a relationship very early in the, the diagnosis process, it's a lot easier for us to determine what has the patient already been evaluated on, what's the next step that needs to be taken, what are the, the main team players that need to be in the ongoing treatment of this patient so that we're able to assist in that. Um, we are also here for the, the ability to help for financial issues. So it, it's just a whole continuum of care that the community needs to know that we are here for. And it doesn't just mean taking care of or looking at patients that come for radiation oncology. We are here for the Florida Hospital Waterman Cancer Center as a community. So as Dr. L talked about it earlier, he may be seeing a patient that needs our services. 
And just because that patient is not part of the radiation oncology side, that doesn't mean that we would not reach out to that patient. Yeah. Right. Also, there is a website that we have on the Florida Hospital Waterman website that deals with the ability to access the cancer center. Sometimes it can come in as just an anonymous question. There's a number that people can call and they can get hooked up to a navigator to find out what do I do? Um, I'm, my son has just been diagnosed with this. Is there somewhere that I can send him to see? Uh, actually, sometimes it could actually be um, an out-of-state person who is looking for some information in regards to what's going on with a loved one that may be out of state. So we're here to help with all entities of trying to facilitate what the patient needs. Perfect. Now we know obviously it's October now, mm -hmm. so it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. What are some of the services offered that help you battle this form of cancer that the Cancer Navigator helps with? Well, with this being October, the first thing that's going to happen is it's actually the kickoff is this evening. It's our pinking ceremony. And that's uh, where we have it specifically at Waterman in the atrium. Um, we have many vendors that are there that patients, family members, anybody who is a caregiver or a support person can come and see what is available. It can be all the way from um, uh, post-mastectomy garment presentations all the way to smoking cessation. So it's a multitude of different type of vendors that are there that are, it's the beginning of the reach out. Um, also it's the kickoff of actually turning our fountain pink. It will be pink for the entire month um, of October. We will have a, one of our physicians who are gonna be a speaker. But we're also asking, if you're coming to this, to please come in and donate a brand new bra. And these new bras are going to be sent to the women's shelters for um, people who are, are in dire need of them. This is just the beginning of it. And then there's no other entertainments that are going on throughout the month as well. And of course, you can find out all about this and get involved at jointhepinkarmy.com. Absolutely. And then on the 18th, there's another big event, the 5K Run. Now, how is that going to benefit some of the different things that are going on with breast cancer? The 5K Run actually has an entrance fee if you choose to be in it. And based on that entrance fee is what's going to go as uh, it's kind of a, a, a huge pot that we have for the avail availability of being able to pull from that for people to come in and have free mammograms if they don't have insurance. Uh, again, these are just screening mammograms, but it is uh, a financial resource for us to make sure that no women over the age of 40, or if they have had any history of diagnosis of prevalent cancer in their family that they would need a mammogram earlier than that, that they would neglect to have that done only because they could not financially afford that. Oh, wow, so it's, a, it's kind of a public service. Absolutely. What would you say is the biggest misconception or issue that you would just like the public to know about breast cancer and the treatment of breast cancer? Well, whenever you hear the word cancer or breast cancer, it, it, it's, a, it's a dreadful phrase that nobody wants to have to hear. But what I can tell you is that breast cancer is beatable and it is curable. The best thing that I can tell um, people is continue doing what has been told for you to do for many, many years, doing um, self breast exams. Nobody in the whole world is going to know your body better than you. And if you can do it on a routine basis, it will help for you to determine if there's anything that is uh, different this month than it was last month or the month before. That's really one of the key things. I know that a lot of times uh, cultural issues will kind of frown on women doing self-breast exams, but in this day and age, it is something that we ourselves as women can take ownership of. Also making sure that they get their mammograms and be consistent about getting them done. Um, when we look at what 
the word breast cancer can be, many people think that, oh my God, you only have X amount of time to live. And that's so untrue. Go to the websites that are, are reputable, such as breastcare.org. Don't surf the internet to go to unreputable places. Give us a call, call us, and, and we will help you through whatever dilemma or decision that you need to make, or even if you're concerned about something. Early detection is always the best. Yeah, it sounds like consistency of treatment too is key. And uh, what would you want to say on a personal note about why you're motivated to continue fighting this battle? Well, one of the things that's wonderful about nursing is it has so many different paths that it can take. Um, I've been in nursing for over 30 years. 15 years of that I have been working in the oncology aspect. And with nursing, you're able to really find your niche. And finding this niche in um, breast cancer is, is what motivates me. I touch people's lives and that's just a wonderful, joyous thing. Thank you so much, Georgianne, for joining us from Florida Hospital Waterman. And thank you for listening to Focus Radio. Don't forget to keep us in your focus.